Uh, yeah. I, I've looked into that and I came to the conclusion that you are ART would be probably the easiest one to take. And um, mm -hmm. before I look into your, um, into your presentation, I found the same link as you called Octoprint. And this is simply marvelous. This is exactly what, what we're searching for. It's yeah. written in Python, so I can modify it at, with ease. It is, um, it is capable of um, monitoring everything via, via Ethernet, like I proposed. So this is more or less what I meant. It's exactly what, what they did. Uh -huh. And I uh, found several attempts on um, using it, on uh, successful attempts on using adult memory print on several printers at once. Yeah. So uh, this should be possible as well. This, yeah. uh, I, I found two links. I'll distribute them to you. I, I can write them to you um, right now or I'll, I'll write them into the work log today. Um, we'll see about that. Um, however, this, the software seems kind of easy actually with, with when we're using this um, software and it's um, optimized for, for Marlin. So it's uh, compatible with, with our printer, um, yeah. with our software. And um, I was thinking only about, uh, because you said it should be scalable yeah. uh, at maximum to up to 100. And I thought, how the hell uh, should we uh, get 100 different uh, cables lying around? This, this would be chaos if we just use USB, but your ARTC would probably be the best solution, yeah. Um, yeah. So th these are the different uh, the different uh, things I thought about. Um, what what I additionally thought about was um, this thing has plugins, so we can put additionally um, some things like uh, measure how much filament is used and s yeah many many other things and, and, and goodies are there. But um, Interesting enough, it has an API, so uh, we could easily uh, write our own um, our own scripts uh, to do uh, specific tasks. Uh, tasks like um, when you, for example, um, fully automating this, um, and you're, you're trying to make this rep lab uh, yeah. if this is still current. Um, yeah. And that for this, it would be kind of interesting, I think, to to give. A bunch of STLs out, and yeah. they will be uh, replicated. And maybe we could write a kind of script that would do that and give back a kind of PDF, how much is used, and so on and so on, uh, so forth, without any kind of interaction from a real person, but just a computer that shoves it further to this to the to the pie. Um, I think this would be a kind of uh, a good. Um, I guess, uh, uh, this would uh, fit fit our needs pretty pretty well, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I agree. So that, that's my point. Um, the last last little thing, maybe um, I've only I've I've seen on the other side an, an another project called Repetier Server. Uh, Repetier. I don't know. Yeah. Um, this is there is a paid version, but of it, but it has also an a bit older GitHub version. Um, the newer version, at least, I don't know what how how old this old version is, but the newer has per default um, does support multiple printers. Um, rest of it is pretty similar to Octoprint. So maybe if Octoprint is making some weird things, this should be looked into too. Um, could be an alternative. Yeah. 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 This is my some of my experience. So. Have you? Sorry, uh, please go. On. No, no problem. Uh, have you looked any at the Marlin firmware, which apparently supports multiple printers and many mail? It's scalable. Uh, have you looked at that link? I've looked into that link. Um, I've I've looked like like how it's how it's used. Um, however, um, not only the the. The Octoprint, but also the other two um, projects I found have um, possibility to load it up to the SD card. And like I said, Octoprint has a has Python, so I would, even if we're not using them, I would implement the Marlin um, interface. I just more or less copy it from the um, from the repository. In any case, yeah. Um, Except, except you have a special kind of mar Marlin, but I don't think 
Thanks. So do you? No, no, we're just uh, just the pretty much the original one. Okay, then. Yeah, I, I think this should be no problem. Yeah. Um, maybe there are some kind of um, with the with one of the cells you had to give it uh, config data, but uh, I haven't looked into it. Uh, one second. And looked into it on the Octoprint, but normally you have to give it a config file, and it would be quite interesting what kind of data you have to fill in this config. Um, yeah. Maybe I find it, or, or maybe you can just send it me via, uh, with, with email so I can. Um, uh, things like the length and. Um, uh, what length. Was it? Um, I can make you the con I, I can send you the config module and uh, and you can return me what what kind of values uh, they're they're using. Yeah. They're using. Right. Um, yeah. One of the biggest things would be to get you some experience on three D printers, and the best the question is, maybe if you can, can you look into? Well, look at. So I'm gonna Google. Stuttgart Maker Spaces. Because they have space, yeah, like for example, Makerspace Werkstatt at. Well, it seems even as something big. Like I said, I, I know a few people of the scene, but, but I've never been into it myself. Yeah, I mean the one thing that I'm I'm no. thinking it would be very useful for you is to get familiarity with 3D printers. So you'd want to find either the Fab Lab or the Makerspace, and just start using one because then you'll understand like all this stuff about configuration and everything else. But of course, the the best thing would be to, I mean, if you could build one of ours, um, that would be. Very good. I'd love to, but but I'm financially, I'm I'm just at least momentarily, I'm I'm just a student, and I, I don't have that much at the moment. It's, yeah. I know it's not that much, but it's just depending upon what would your average month. And at the moment, it's, it's simply not possible. Maybe right. In a few months or something. Yeah. Yeah. So um, finding. Yeah. So I think the priority should be to find. Um, Let's see, maker spaces in Stuttgart. Let's look at that again. Uh, I mean, I we found should... something here, so, so it seems uh, it seems to be pr pretty big actually. Uh, I think. I mean, uh, there's... there's one in in, in my university. As, as far as I know, that there was there's been something. Um, um, at your university. But... Um, sorry, what's your university again? Stuttgart University, Stuttgart it has no special name actually. It's just, just that. University Makerspace. So do they have a makerspace there, hackerspace. I think there, was, uh, I think there was something. Like, like I said, uh, I know a few people, but um, I've never come with them, so uh, not exactly into the details. Details. I, I've, I've never used them, but but I've often informed myself about it. So so I've seen uh, many videos like like the, how they work and, and stuff. So so I'm not I'm not entirely new to it. However, I uh, don't know um, well, what what kind of filament is best for what and some stuff like that. It's mm -hmm. just beyond what what I what I looked up. Yeah. It's, it's so here's one uh, for example. I, I, yeah, shack shackspace.de Stuttgart Shack hackerspace, space. for example. Space is open. Ah, yeah, that, that looks perfect, yeah. Yeah, you really want to try to see if you can find yourself for that. But in the meantime, um, you can research, just keep researching the route to doing this. But eventually, you would have to. Uh, I mean, one side is documenting how everything is done, documenting the whole system the implementation so basically start writing directions of how like if if you give me that those directions okay get a raspberry pi make these connections and so forth if you can design that very carefully then i can do it okay. here so that's that's one way to do it if you can simply 
start producing those details and the see this is how I'm thinking about it um, and I want to see if this logic makes space makes sense so say you want to scale up to 10 20 30 40 50 printers you know you've got some operation going and you've got real good production then running all those wires is pretty tricky I mean it's just too much infrastructure so the best idea would be just send the data over through through some form of wireless and therefore you avoid all the wires and I know that there's a challenge that for streaming you don't want to do like a long streaming wireless print because that's that can get interrupted easily um, and how do you control it depends, it depends upon the, the structure but I, I think you're, yeah. you're quite right especially when you think about uh, the, the files per se are, are not that big, so it's not really a, a, a pain to, to send them in, in advance for and, and wait exactly. for a second or two or maybe three. So I, I, I definitely agree to put them on the SD card in yeah. advance. Yeah, so if we can specify that as our requirement, and I don't know what Octopi does, but the way I saw that, for one, I don't think they do it like that. I think they typically use a wired connection and the way um, it doesn't actually matter um, they, they take it out of the dev they, they, they uh, put out the dev so as long as you've got something in your dev um, thing in the, in the Linux and you can more or less I think it's no problem even to make it with Bluetooth and stuff um, because as long as, as it is in your uh, dev directory um, uh, it will scan it out and, and try it as long as it's a serial port it will try to, to make a connection um, yeah. Okay. So, so I don't think, especially with this with the wireless, with the UART, I can't, I can't speak. UART, yeah. UART. Um, I don't think it's it's any problem. I, I don't think there's anything because it's this wireless isn't uh, interpreted by the by the computer as wireless because it's just uh, something you plug in. Where otherwise there would be a, a cable, so yeah. there's no kind, no no way to distinguish this. And yeah. So it's not nothing different um, compared to making it with a cable. So I don't think there should be any problems. Okay, so if we can find a route where the, where we can do wirelessly, you send the file over and then save to SD card. That would be the preferred route. So. What do we need to continue working on it? So, so can you continue researching that that avenue of doing it, and see what you can come I'm up actually, with? Um, actually, I actually think uh, this this is all, our, already the solution with, with Octopi. Okay. Of course, uh, there may be some kind of op obstacles, but uh, okay. from the way it works, it's exactly what we're searching for. So there, there's also a way of uploading it to an SD card. Okay. Uh, before before making it, there's a preview. You can you can look up everything, and it's, it's just available via uh, via Ethernet, so yeah, uh, it can be run headless and without any problems. And okay. Like I said, with the API, we can also auto automate this in any way. And what about for conditions where, say, there is no internet? How do we the, do that? This has nothing to do with the with the internet, it's Ethernet, it's just your local network. As long as you're with the same router as the Raspberry Pi, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, so the only condition that wouldn't work is actually when you have no Ethernet cable left or your router is, has totally fallen apart. And even then you could connect the Raspberry Pi to your own PC and get it to work, although this would be pretty complicated actually. Better not try it. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. You could also connect a, a desktop to the Raspberry Pi and put in its own IP, so local host, and it would also pop up. So uh -huh. it's never lost in that way. It's it's just for convenience. Um, it's normally for the local network, so for your house and nothing mm -hmm. outside, except you would ex especially um, you are explicitly wishing that um, you can okay. do port forwarding. Um, okay. So, so you have a local network or Ethernet uh, connection. Then, how do you so say the controlling Raspberry Pi? Uh, how do we initially 
give it the programs like so so say we generate the workflow would be actually let's let's document this so I'm in this I started this a, a separate document so take a look at this this one and so I just basically transferred the stuff from before let me share that make sure you can edit that um, yeah would, would be useful yeah yeah, yeah anyone okay. can edit this uh, one so see that. You, perfect yeah yeah if you go into that um, so so let's start looking at wireless sends to SD card okay so say the, the workflow workflow so you generate typically with FreeCAD generate files with FreeCAD so yeah. um, and then can I use this like for example I'm on this computer so let's take a use use case I'm using this computer I just generated some some 3d print files I'd like to send them to my print cluster so can I just uh, communicate open a connection to the Raspberry Pi so um, as far as I looked upon it it's it's heavy heavily on development it's it's finished but it's getting better so so I'm not quite sure what the point at the moment is the point of development but as far as I see it, you can upload um, an STL file I don't know if this uh, FSCTL or I, I don't know free I, I don't know the, the, the native file of FreeCAD will work, but STLs work in every way. Um, okay. And they'll get sliced down in this uh, G format or, or how this is called. Yeah, G and, code, yeah. Uh, then it gets sent over. Right. Exactly, and, and then they get sent over and uh, saved or, or streamed uh, however it is preferred. So I don't think uh, this should be a problem. Um, okay. Maybe if I have too much time, let's see, um, maybe I can make an internal converter so you can upload the free card and it gets from the server converted into STL before it gets converted into G. So um, then then we wouldn't have any kind of converting stress. Oh, wow. That would be... Native. Yeah, that, that actually would be quite useful because then we wouldn't have to keep a separate set of STL files. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what I meant. Yeah. Maybe, I, I, I don't know whether this will work, but I'm pretty sure Python can do such stuff. And as this is already Python, it probably would only be a kind of relink of the workflow that's that's there already. Yeah. So maybe I can look into that. Yeah, yeah, excellent. So, so let's say we generate files with FreeCAD. Uh, we can say optionally later use native FreeCAD format for printing. Um, so open the connection to a Raspberry Pi. You're sending this file to a Raspberry Pi. And then you have the option Raspberry Raspberry Pi can connect to say 12 printers. So that let's look at the current case because I'm looking at about 10 to 12 printers right here. I'm actually in the process of making nine more. I just did the frames. If you looked at, uh, have you looked at the Open Source Ecology Workshops Facebook page? Uh, I'll, 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 I'll. I don't have any Facebook. I'm, I'm one of these, these crazy guys. Um, oh, you so don't. I, but I've looked at into the the wiki workflow, so I'm, I'm a bit in, into it. But uh huh. You don't use Facebook. um, you don't use Facebook. Yeah. Okay, that's good. It's a good idea. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I put some, I put some pictures. So, so actually, I'm gonna cut and paste this into the, the document just to show, for your reference. Excellent. Yeah, then uh, I know what, what to do. Um, yeah, we'll we'll need an extra uh, transmitter and receiver for every. Um, for every machine and we'll need an extra converter from USB to serial for every machine. And this also means we'll need several USB hubs because uh, every um, thing will, will need a USB port and this will at least be 10 USB ports. And actually I think this is the bottle cap. It's it's not the not the not that the Raspberry Pi is too slow. I think uh, at some point uh, the USB will, will break down 
theoretically they could make up to 127 devices I've looked it up. Uh-huh. But uh, I think as it is USB 2.0 and not 3.0, uh, I think it will uh, get with the bandwidth, it will get so slow that maybe um, uh-huh. it will just break down at some point. Right. But I don't think it will be a problem with 10 or less uh, printers. However, when we're looking in, in the way to 100 or something like that, maybe a bit inefficient at some point. Right, but, but what but if... That's, that's, Right, but but what if you're just all you're doing with the Raspberry Pi is just sending the file over to the to the Arduino with wireless? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I I know I know what you mean, but I'm not quite sure whether uh, how many USB hubs you can okay. put after each other until until they they break down. I see. Um, what what should be said? Um, use powered. One. So, so, so such things that um, take an additional cable for, for their own power source, as when you're using several of them, probably the Raspberry Pi won't deliver enough energy. So, um, okay, use but non ones. Right, so you're talking. I, I, I can write that down, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you're talking about. Question. Yeah, you can, you can put that into the document. Like, you can start new pages in this. Uh, like, for example, okay. have you used Google Docs yeah, yeah, before? Uh, for four years now, so that's that's not a problem. Okay, okay. It's, it's just I, I don't know how your structure is, so so I, I don't want to trust. Yeah, no, no, just don't worry about that. Just just keep start adding pages with different different things <laughs> okay. on the front page. What we want to do is uh, actually we probably want to copy the front page, duplicate that, and just put an index on the front page so that. Um, okay. Then. So I can just start the index. So we can we can link on the first page. We can link to the different pages. So simple index. That's all. Yeah. Uh, so we keep track. Right, then, uh, yeah. Um. Oops. Nah. Yeah. That, that wasn't right. Um. It's a bit laggy back here. Is it? Let's see. Yeah. I'll I'll do that. Um. So we'll need those powered ones. We'll need the the, the transmitter and receiver. Um, after that, I I personally uh, the, the greatest job for me will actually be not to set the print up. At least I hope this won't be the main job. <laughs> um, I hope I can concentrate on um, putting in several printers, as this is not. Uh, not specifically uh, designed to, for doing that, but um, you can put several processes behind each other, so they're kind of um, taking several um, devices from the thing. And maybe I'll, I can write a script that kind of identifies uh, the serial parts and take everything that looks like a printer and uh, put it uh, and start a demo for it. Mm-hmm. That would be okay. the optimal solution. So so let me ask you this. So you um, talked you talked about let me ask you this question. So you we are discussing the possibility of we're sending files to a Raspberry Pi and that Raspberry Pi is communicating communicating wirelessly to all the different 3D printers which have their own Arduino with an SD card with ramps and SD, SD card. So in that case what what is the position the place of the USB hubs though? Because if we're going wirelessly, uh, those, why do you need... Those will... the, the problem is UARTC, as, as you probably know, um, is no no Wi-Fi and it's no Bluetooth or something like that. It's, it's more like a specific wave and we'll actually have to use a different wave for each uh, device. Yeah. Otherwise, it would be sent to every device and there's no way to split uh, the information yeah. up, there's no, kind, no no possibility to do that. So okay. we'll have actually to uh, we'll actually have fifty transmitter, uh, uh, one transmitter for every and uh, as many tra- receivers, one for the printer and one for the Pi each. And this okay. is the reason why we need many many USB ports for the Pi, as everyone will will even so forth. It's will look hellishly. Uh, I, I can't imagine it. Uh huh. <laughs> twenty twenty. Speak. But how do we, yeah. <laughs> yeah? How do we do that? Because we know that the Raspberry Pi it has what the four four USB ports. Like I 
said, we, we can use USB hubs. Uh, I don't think this will okay. be any problem um, okay. as long as we're not overrating it. We, we can kind of try, uh, maybe I research it further, but um, yeah. we can just try it and, and look um, at what points the, the information gets lost. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Maybe. That sounds good. So, so what are the next steps then? So do you have enough information to go on for now? I think I have enough information. I'll try to make an image for now. So you have just to write the image onto your Raspberry Pi. Then you can set up the, the stuff and I'll hopefully um, you'll just test it for now with one printer. Okay. And look whether this one printer will will receive and deliver. Um, when this works, I'll try... Um, you'll give me some kind of feedback. And okay. I'll try to... Um, make a script out of it so it can automatically detect all the printers it's connected and kind of integrate this into the entire system. Okay, so okay, that's good. So simple testing, and but let's let's then therefore start with what we need here because I actually don't have a Raspberry Pi here. I have a BeagleBone, but. Uh, let's do Raspberry Pi. So, so let's let's look at how that system would look like. Um, can you right, can um, you continue drawing in there too? The Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. The Raspberry Pi uh, is of the third uh, of third generation. Um, let's see. So somehow. Oh, oh! I I can only read it. I can't write it. That's that's why why this doesn't work. I I was kind of confused why why all the buttons are missing. Oh uh, um, wait, you can't you can't edit it right maybe, now? Yeah, I can't edit it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I edited it. Yeah, in German it's writing. Sorry, <laughs> um, it's it's kind of the same. So we got. Um... Um, I was just confused because I I I've done it so many times and I just couldn't find the buttons. So right. <laughs> A little bit stupid. <laughs> now, now, um, can you edit? Uh, not yet, but um, I hope soon, maybe. Not yet. Don't know. I I'll reload it, maybe, maybe as well. Yeah. Ah, reloading it uh, did the trick. All tricks to the best. Ah, yeah. Um. So we'll. I, I actually don't know how your setup is. So for one thing, um, this is all in your rep lab, more or less. Yeah. Am I saying this right? So this yeah. is just some kind of big fabric, or not big, but, but some, some kind of... Bigger, yeah, well, uh, actually, so there's the workshop. So wherever, wherever the printers are, I've got some at the house here, some at the workshop. But let's assume there's a computer. There's a wireless connection. Uh, I have a wireless okay. connection on this, uh, so so there's a router somewhere. Um, okay. So somewhere I'm running off a router for my internet. Okay, this that sounds sounds perfect. Uh, that will do. That that will um, that will make the Pi position a bit more flexible. Uh huh. Um, so we got the Raspberry Pi, and then we'll from have, there we also have we have wireless. So you so the Raspberry Pi is going to have a hub, or or just first we do. We do just a single. No hub. Um. So so the the Raspberry Pi will actually only have um, an SD card in in it for 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 the for the hard drive as a hard drive, and it will get. Um, Edgy via a micro USB cable. Uh, it won't require more because um, it has a um, Wi-Fi um, receiver built in, and this will probably deliver for all we for all our users because um, web server is TCP. So um, this means I've, I've uh, looked this up. So no no errors get made. Um, Every file that's sent to the server um, has a checksum uh -huh. in it per default. So even if it's wireless and therefore not every signal gets through, it will ask as often as necessary until uh, the file gets through without a mistake. Um, 
so there's no, no problem with using via, okay. wireless um, for the for the Ethernet connection. Right. Um, so we say it has built-in wireless or built-in Ethernet. Uh, both. I mean wireless, but it's actually the same protocol, so I, I call it both. Sorry. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's, um, let's see. Um, I'm a horrible designer. I, I must say I'm, I'm good at, at drawing stuff. Yeah, so we've got so. SD card, micro USB for power. And the micro USB would come from where? Uh, just a wall plug? Just a wall plug. It, it will need um, maybe one and a half ampere at least. Um, better is two, but uh, probably two and five it will volts. also work with one, but uh, I, I just wouldn't advise it because uh, then it could shut down at some point when, when uh, okay. it needs too much power. Uh, Raspberry Pi 3 has actually um, a pretty high power consumption compared to the other ones, but for one it has this Wi-Fi and therefore we can shut off the Ethernet port and then it's not, not that much of difference. And for another, it's very, very powerful, especially mm -hmm. compared to the other ones. It's about 15 times faster as the first generation and about mm. five times faster at the as the second. Oh, so wow. um, maybe we could think about using this for other tasks as well. Mm. I have about four more or less complex tasks on my running, and it's never, even when all are more or less at their height of usage, uh, they're, they're never, uh, the process is never to over 25%. Yeah. What's uh, the clock speed on it? What is it, like a gigahertz? or? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I think 1.4 quad core, actually. Yeah. So it's good for distributing, uh, distributing several tasks. So it's perfect as a server, actually, like mm -hmm. it is at the moment. Um, you can you can put very uh, you can put many tasks on it. You could make backups uh, when when it's when it's idle and so, so st such stuff. Um, if there are any other tasks you leave your computer on for, um, you could actually uh, think about putting them on the Pi. Yeah. Um, it's definitely powerful enough for everything except for maybe some things like antivirus or rendering videos yeah except you want to leave it running all night long or something okay so from uh, the raspberry pi the connection to the 3d printer so so at the end here is we got a 3d printer so uh would that be this wireless is, this is at this fine. point so we we get the wireless or, or just uh can we at this point do wireless for the 3d printer so that means um it would have ramps with wireless module so um, the 3D printer at the moment, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure what, what a, pro, a 3D printer has, but um, as far as I've seen, those wireless UI RTCs uh, are just placed upon the original, as far as I, I've seen them. So we'll just place them upon them, and um, the, the other reader will never notice uh, something has changed, because okay. it's just the same pins. Um, and like I said, um, the Raspberry Pi, on the other hand, will um, have the other half of this um, of the setup, and will then um, connect it like it had, like it have a USB um, connection. Okay. That's that's actually all. So like this, what I drew up. 3D printer. It has yeah. the ramps controller board. We add on the wireless connector, and then. Right. Add the SD card reader to the ramps, which is uh, available. Exactly. M may maybe uh, also the um, the Pi with its um, with its receivers here. So, uh, this is bad. I have done this uh, as often as you did. <laughs> yeah. No, just a simple um, diagram. Um, simple that's diagram. Just. Uh, uh, I'll make a broken connection for wireless. I get it. That's 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 perfect. What what I meant is is the connection to the to the. Um, but that's that's a good idea as well. It it should be. I do get this. Uh, copy paste. 
Exactly. Copy paste, yeah. It's basic tricks, yeah. USB so, to wireless. Mm -hmm. So and and so that this this is kind of what ah the why is mine not not here? Not, let me not, 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 I'll not, change it right there. There it is. So oh, all right, all right. Okay, exactly that. That's what I meant. Um, maybe maybe we should kind of put in uh, the the. Uh, oh. What's it I wanted to say? <laughs> the the USB hub for the USB to wireless in some way. Uh huh. Part USB hub at some point, so so it's clear how this is getting uh, USB for, to wireless. So so it's got built-in Ethernet and it's got a USB to a wireless hub, or what's it called? What's yeah, USB to wireless? Just USB hub, just just like that. Oh, one second. Can you uh, can you paste a link to you. that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll just I'll just send you what what I mean. Something like uh, okay, this is German side, but I think you know what I mean. It's it's nothing nothing complex. It's just um, something like this. Um, first thing that popped up. Um, just uh, one one plug in, several plugs out. That's that's the entire idea behind it. Like a like a like a Ethernet switch, but for USB. Um, it should be powered. That's um, otherwise uh, maybe the, the power would crush down. It's it's suitable for for things like keyboard and such such things, but uh, wireless will probably take actually pretty much of energy of the energy, and when there are ten or more than it's going to get pretty uh, energy heavy. Uh huh. Take a lot of it. So uh, maybe maybe. Uh, uh, oh, I see. I think this is called active. Oh, huh, okay. Um. Five um, one. So they they cost around two to ten dollars, I think, or euros, so probably also dollars. I hope. Um, yeah, that's all. Okay, excellent. So I'll just put a little little picture in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that would be awesome. Um. Uh, So do that. Um, uh huh. On uh, excellent. On on this document, uh, you can see um, the thing that would be used um, into the USB uh, parts of the of the uh, hubs. Sorry. I'm Wait. Not. Let's see. So how? Let me see this thing. Um, so that has a USB connection on one side, and it has... Actually a micro USB, as I see, so maybe we'll just see a converter, or we'll, we'll, we'll look up for one with a USB connection, but a kind of like this, uh, the, the circuit is definitely the correct one. Okay, um, but let's see, so, so how are you getting then from that USB hub, USB to wireless, what do you need from there to get to the 
Does that have the wireless module built inside of it and it's got more USB ports on it? Is that what it does? Yeah, that, that's all. It's just a multiplexer, I think, from, uh -huh. the, from the circuit in itself. So uh, they're just multiplexer USB ports. Uh huh. So it'll be. So it's four USB ports plus wireless transmission? No, nothing wireless. This is just the, the hub. Then there, there will be the uh, this, this converter like I sent you, maybe with another port, but uh, the circuit will be like this one. Yeah. And um, up onto this, there will be something like that. Uh, let's see, that's that's the last one now. It's pretty long, but but I actually don't know. Like I said, Bluetooth would would be pretty complicated, although you'd save a lot lot of uh, cable actually. So. Uh -huh. Maybe we could use future, but it would be uh, pretty pretty painful as you could not uh, send to several printers at the same time as you had had to pair and disconnect for every new. Um, oh uh, yeah, new, um, yeah. And that that would be I, I could script that I think, but that would be pretty complex actually because you had to handle that out every time and somehow you had to say the the web server that. Something has changed now, so you had to refresh that also. Right. Yeah. Let's not worry about that. Sword. Not yet. Um, Let's not do that yet. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I sent you this, 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 this <laughs> tutorial. This uh, kind of explains how you can uh, connect your Arduino to your computer uh, like it had a cable uh, with exactly this... this um, this wireless uh, uh, transmitter. We so, need one wireless um, transmitter per device. Like we need multiple one per device and a, one per device also on the Pi. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So here we're taking the USB to wireless multiplexer for four ports, and then we plug in four of these guys. Yep. Exactly. So let's say let's say we've got um, yeah let's represent that. So we've got a bunch of these coming off of this one. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I think this one's getting the idea. I think. Mm-hmm. And um, yes, exactly. And on the other on the on the, on the, on the other side, there are, um, you just plug in the. Um, Wireless UART module. Pictures can be found on this uh, tutorial site. There are multiple uh, pictures of uh, those little transmitters. I see. So yeah. the. The. Um, USB to UART first, and after this one, we need the wireless module plugged into the, the pins exactly. here. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. You know. um, and which you should um, also look out. We have to find an own signal for each printer, as I said. So we should buy um, buy transmitters that um, can be adjusted. So uh, we're not buying twenty of these, and they're all on the same uh, on the same wave. And right, yeah, that would be just a mess. So this should be uh, definitely on the on the list uh, as, as important. Um, yeah, I don't know whether those in, in the links have it, but I've I've seen um, I've seen that they exist uh, with with a um, sorry I'm, I'm, um, yeah yeah you can, no, you I, can I see what you're the, saying the wavelength on, 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 on some of those um, so there's a multiplexer devices. there's a USB to UART converter. And then there's the UART to wireless. Let's see. Exactly. And then this UART to wireless, yeah. Exactly. About the middle of the tutorial, you can see uh, how this would look on the Pi. So there, there's a cable coming out of one end and 
getting to the front seat on the other end, and on the other side you can see the micro USB cable plugged in. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pretty on the on on. Yeah. On the middle of the side. Yeah. yeah. Let me uh, copy a picture yeah, there. Yeah, that, that would be it. Um, I think this would be the. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to copy that whole picture in because that's a good picture. Shows it. Yeah. Um, um, to be to be a bit more 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 precise about that, we should um, actually just to be technically correct, um, wireless is always from the router uh, from from the router. It's it's never from one computer to another. It's always going its way uh, through the router. So it's more like this when I'm doing it right. Um, I have no talent for this. This is, this is horrible. <laughs> um, Right, so we've got router with internet, wireless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so once you do that. Maybe like that, and, and this would be kind of in the middle as an, as an explanatory element, so like that, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so the thing after USB just, to UART converter. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. Sorry? That's good. Um, this is UART transmitter. That's what yep. we say here. Uh, just one second, my battery is about to die. And okay. If I'm just uh, failing, I'll be back in a minute. Yeah. I'll try. So, okay. In time. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh yeah, exactly. That that looks fine. Well, so it looks like we've got pretty much uh, our diagram. Um, let's see. So what else do we need? So you've got the UART transmitter. So now let's draw the other side. So now what are we doing uh, to receive that? So we're gonna have a let's see from the Arduino for uh, one uh, no, no I know what you mean um, the, the transmitter for the Arduino looks pretty much the same yeah um, so it's just put in where the um, serial port normally goes that's pretty much all um, so uh, I'll look whether I find a picture but, uh, for it. Maybe there's something, something here. No. And uh, um, another thing, wh why why I chose your ART after um, after um, uh, I looked into Bluetooth was um, it has uh, it's be um, it's better for for far. Uh, uh, I, I can't tell. Um, <laughs> how do you say that? Um, for 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 um, when it's when it's further away, um, it it has uh, it goes further um, with with the wireless U eight RT than Bluetooth. Bluetooth yeah. has about ten meters range range. That's uh -huh. uh, ten meters range and U uh, eight RT about. 100 to 500 depending on what kind of antenna you're using so uh, you can ex actually you could uh, place the Raspberry Pi on the other side of the of the fact factory and it oh, wow. probably wouldn't make a difference 100 to 500 meters yeah oh wow that's uh, that's what I see and actually you could make it even better 
with um, placing another antenna on it. So you, you just um, may. Um... <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm really tired. Sorry. Um, it's just um, putting off the old antenna and putting another one on, a stronger one, so there you can buy spare antennas that uh, will travel probably kilometers if oh, you're wow. into that. But probably that won't be necessary. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, but here actually is one, one kilometer uh, wireless UART. <laughs> huh. Transium module here is one. Uh, can but, you uh, put a link to like that? Like I said, I, I don't think this is necessary, but uh, just saying this is uh, uh, probably more suitable than 10 meters, which means you're kind of uh, fixed to the spot in some, in some way. Can you send uh, a link to that one, to the one kilometer? Yeah, it's, it's just a manual, so I, I have quite found but it's it actually looks like the, the one we few, we're using for the diagram so it's it's all, also this side from it's all also four four forty three one kilometer huh rf transceiver module that antenna there would do one kilometer I, I think so. <laughs> it's 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 more more down, so it's not like Wi-Fi with it's five gigahertz. Four thirty three has uh, further space, like radio waves have. So I think that's the reason why. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's the reason why I'm I'm actually no uh, not into that that much. Just a bit of applied physics. I don't know. But I've I've seen uh, several people tested that and they could uh, at least say that it's several hundred meters, so it's yeah. not it's not live. Huh, that's really it's good. Not I'm gonna paste that in just so. just for reference. So maybe there will be some applications later on that we do need that. But um, yeah, one kilometer. That's amazing. Yeah, it's actually for 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 this kind of. What, what it can send, it's actually amazingly far, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So it, it, this, this actually looks like the thing I've, I've found a tutorial for. It looks exactly like it. So I, I think this is the one. But fortunately, I can't find a picture suitable for the other side. However, um, like you, you, you can see already, it's just the four pins on on one side. On, uh -huh. on the first picture, you can see it's just four pins, uh, five five pins. Sorry, yes, five pins. Um, and you just fix them to the Arduino when where normally the serial port would be, and that's actually all. It's, oh wow! And and, and that's it, why it's you don't have to do any configuration um, or anything else. Nothing, no, no, just the I, same. I don't think so. Maybe I'm I'm not quite sure. I think it's normally four parts of five, and I think the fifth one is um, is probably an additional energy source. I, I I'd say I, I'm I'm not quite sure, but I hope it's 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 somewhere here. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. So I'm 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 very sure there's n nothing more in configuration. Yeah, I, I can I can promise you that as I've uh, read this now several times. Yeah. Um, but I'm not exactly sure what the. Uh, what this fit. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of those transmitters and we're going to put it on the. That's called the wireless add on, right? That's that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's... Wow, and that's that, it. And now we can, so we can represent this, like, um, this multi, from this multiplexer, we can essentially go to, like, I'll just draw this without drawing this, but basically we can now control a bunch of these, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Maybe put this in some kind of cloud or something, so it's, it's maybe it's visible that there could be many of them, something like that. Um, mm-hmm. Um, Kind of can't find anything suitable, but, but uh, it will do. Uh, it will do I guess. Yeah, ex 
exactly. So you can go like this, another 3D printer. Yeah, perfect. That's. Excellent. That's a good diagram here. So, yeah, that's, that's good. That's excellent. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think. Okay, so now what I need to do, so next page would be system diagram, BOM, build materials. So maybe we can start the next page um, on a build of materials. So uh, we've got, let me just take a look at that here. Um, so you got the router with internet. So that's that I already have. I'm on the computer. I need a Raspberry Pi, SD card, micro power, wall plug, built-in ethernet. That's already has it. The, all the Raspberry Pi vers version 3 have built-in Ethernet? Yeah, yeah, they all have. There, there's no uh, version valve. So you can just say that. Um, just one thing that, that should be kind of important, like I said, um, the USB wireless multiplexer should just have an external power source so we can scale this up as much as the uh, uh, as the um, transmission speed will allow us. Oh, which um, say that again? We should have the more. The USB wireless multiplexer there. Uh -huh. uh, oh yeah, with its own. I don't know how to squeeze that in. Uh, maybe maybe we should put this on on the other. Oh, wait, uh, wait. Let's see. Let's page. do. Let's do this. Probably the wall plug should be, then. Just for management, this is not, not, not really important for the diagram, but uh, for, for your uh, shopping list kind of. Um, so we have most um, of those USB multiplexer have as an external power source something that's also powered by USB. So maybe you can um, buy a wall, wall plug that has five or something like that. Because they, uh, a wall plug that has only one output is, sub, is most of the time more expensive than, than one that has several and so you could um, put everything in there wait so one of those um, this multiplexer will have will have what one wait how do you power it it has an external another connection for power yeah ex exactly and no normally this powers also like Raspberry Pi um, via 5 volts or over some kind of USB on the other side. It's not micro USB per default, mostly it's some kind of a round plug. Um, don't know, it looks like the most of the laptop cables but in far, far smaller. Mm -hmm. um, and you just plug them in onto another USB um, port and you could use the wall mount for example when it, when it has several USB outputs. Because you already buy one, and um, yeah. when you when you buy one, you can buy one with five plugs. Because this is not immensely more expensive. It's actually um, wall mount for one costs at least here uh, begins at six dollars or something like that, and uh, it goes up then for five. It's only ten dollars, so yeah. it's kind of uh, uh, it would be quite useful to 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 use one 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 mount to um, to power all, everything but actually you have to, to, to search this, this kind of um, multiplexer probably something like active or, or something like this should be in the word mm -hmm. um, okay I'll, I'll just search for it as well um, let's see maybe, maybe I'll find the, the um, right name for it yeah there's some things like uh, this hard to Mm -hmm. 
do. I'm not quite sure why they're so expensive, but I'll just give you a link of, as an example. Maybe you find something cheaper. Just uh, when I use my price, um, comparing, I'll just get German uh, German um, offers, and that, that that won't help you. So um, something like that. It is. Printed in com. Get. Why is it already? Well, you get the picture, so it, it has to have also another plug in some way. This is actually with micro USB, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. From, from um, design, this is actually perfect, but it's a bit expensive. Is that. Um, is that the USB to wireless multiplexer? That's it. That's just the USB multiplexer. So it's that's the yeah yeah exactly. That's the USB to, to wireless exactly. I mean, you can't really say wireless. It's just the USB multiplexer, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. It's it's just the USB multiplexer. Yeah, that that confused me now for a moment. Yeah, that that probably would be better to just call. It. USB hub or multiplexer. I, I think hub is, is the it's a common um, common uh, phrase for it. But uh, I don't know. I, I think you can call it also switch. In other words. Okay. Right. Okay. All right, so that's pretty good. Um, let's see, are you able to search for like US Amazon where you are or it doesn't? It, I, I, I think it's possible, but um, it's not as easy <laughs> as, as I thought. Um, so may, right. maybe I can do that, yeah. But, um, okay, so maybe. I'll try in the future. Okay, so let's do slide, duplicate the slide and now get a detailed BOM then so sorry was a bit cut off here yeah let's get a next step would be to work on a BOM so maybe I can get you can I get you to now do a list of all the specific parts part by part um, so basically a list from from one to I guess like 15 parts or so here um, yeah yeah of course um... But this, this has kind of the problem about the... Uh, um, if you can do the German version, like the specific ones, um, then... Uh, so basically we need... Um, yeah, Raspberry Pi. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll for, for now just yeah. use the German links and yep. uh, for the time and uh, I'll, I'll search something uh, in the US. Uh, yes. Yes, that's great. Later that's great. Um, so we need everything from like after the wireless and the diagram, the router with the internet, everything after that. I need the Raspberry Pi, 
transmitters. I have, the only thing I have is the Arduino and ramps. Then the wireless add-on and SD card, I still need that. So, um... Um, for, for, for the Pi or uh, for, for the 3D printer? 3D printer. So, um... Both. So the 3D printer doesn't have an SD card? Oh, okay. No, it um, just has... So, so I'm going to color that in. I'm going to color these ones in green. As far as what... Uh, green. Uh, what, what, what you already... What we already uh, have. All right. Yeah, perfect. That's... So that's all I have. Everything else uh, we need. Mm -hmm. So there's one, two, three, four, all five, right. six, seven, eight, nine, ten, just eleven pieces. So yeah, if you can complete that, maybe send that over to me, and then I'll I'll just get that, and then we can continue. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you can do that, do you have time to do that today? So I can maybe order like tomorrow or something. Uh, I think I can do that today. Yeah, um, probably will be the last thing because it's pretty dark. Oh, oh yeah. Here, but, yeah. Oh yeah, it's yeah. pretty late. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I think I can do that today. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's only right. eleven parts. Eleven parts total. So that's good. And then I can get that. And then. Sorry. Yeah. I just put placeholders yeah, you, there. You cut off sometimes because it it's so so. Right, there's only a total of 11 parts. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's all, um, it's actually only 10 because the external parts source of the USB hub will of course be um, delivered within the USB hub um, in some way. Um, either by buying a more, more uh, a cheap uh, in wall plug or because it's uh, in the box. Wait, one you're of, saying the external the powers? You're saying the wall plug for the Raspberry Pi and the USB hub power are going to be the same? Uh, if if I find the right links, I'll I'll try to manage that because it would be far more convenient, as I'd say. Yeah, one less plug. If you agree. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that would be good. Especially as we don't won't have only one. USB hub as we will have maybe five or so yes, in the future, yes. so um, maybe one big wall plug for several USB, USB doesn't take that much of an, of an energy, so one plug should deliver everything. We yeah, need. yeah, um, so actually right now maybe what I will do is uh, probably yeah, yeah, just get one, get the system, so maybe what I'll get is like a couple, two or three of those wireless adapters so that we can start scaling up because one single hub we can get to four printers there that'll be good yeah yep correct perfect yeah perfect i'll i'll just test in the in, the, in some days i'll just test the image but without the 3d printer of course i can't quite see how compatible it is with the machine so you'll have to uh, yeah. test that for me yeah, 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 excellent, excellent. So this is really good. That's major progress, so, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So I'll um, just leave you then. Yeah, uh, yeah. An hour or two of the links. Um, actually, So that looks pretty good here. Um, simple system. Yeah. Yeah, go so, ahead. So, sorry, that threw me out. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, what I wanted to say, a uh, uh, more or less uh, personal interest uh, about, the, about the project in large scale. Um, it's, it's about the scarcity and, of course, about, the, uh, about um, making the resource from scratch as far as I could define it. Um, that that's right, actually. Oh. Um, I think. And yes, that is. Uh, m most of the parts I could find, or I could find a way how your machines could manufacture practically everything. But there are two major parts to re relying upon without kind of searching a solution or, or without serving a, a way. And I, I just want to ask whether you have something in mind. 
uh, and one thing would be the uh, the generators, the the diesel generators or what whatever um, they're yeah. using. So the um, those are kind of complex things. Of course, they're not quite as scarce as other parts. But uh, is there some kind of idea how to produce them? Yeah, well, in the Global Village construction set, there's the the external combustion engine, which is a steam engine. But once we have the CNC machining infrastructure, we can make them. We can make engines in the future. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, I mean, that's people have been building engines for about 100 or 200 years now. So that's not it's not super difficult to do that. Yeah. Definitely. Probably. I, I know how they work and I know they have many parts and I can't quite think of how to build them with yeah. such raw tools, but, but maybe, well, that they're, they're refined enough, I think, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the other thing, which is maybe a bit of a more of a concern, is uh, what, what about microprocessors? Yeah, well, I think uh, we can do... On the scale, once again, technology gets miniaturized, just like 3D printers and micro machining. Once you have fabrication capacity, you can build a facility to produce micro uh, micro controllers and semiconductors. If you got silicon, you got sand, you've got chips. So I mean, that's how we look at it. So so the eventual goal is on a 20-year roadmap, and that's. Have you seen the 20-year roadmap? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen it. It's very ambitious. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so you know, we keep going technology by technology. We have photovoltaics. That's semiconductors already. Yeah, I mean, we we'll be able to do that. Uh, so that's that's the goal to show a showcase where you can do that. I mean, when people did that initially, I mean, they did it all in labs and then they scaled it up to to factories. So think about still you've got the labs, but then now the factories convert from factories to micro factories. So you can do it on a much smaller scale. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. but 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 the microprocessors have have a such such a different uh, yeah. approach on on being produced. That that's 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 what I was thinking about. I don't know whether they have any open source uh, initiative to to try this because it's yeah. this, with this photosensitive materials to to kind of get rid of the silicon and then get those uh, those structures with lenses and the lightning but actually those those machines aren't too big so I, I don't know I, yeah you, you have enough to do this is, this is not, not not actually a proposal or something I just want to ask whether there is you're kind of waiting for a technology that that's that's doing this on on, on the that scale or I, I no I mean Look, the individual machines that do those processes, they're small. It's just the fact that there's a whole string of them, a whole facility of them. But each individual machine is, it's not big. It's like a, you know, size of a room or size of a desktop, you know. You can do that all on a smaller scale. So, I don't see, I mean, basically what you do is you examine how does the technology happen today. And then you can open source it. So yeah, we aim to do that. That's I mean that's just natural. Like um, in the future, as information becomes open, uh, that limits are there is no limits to that. Information can become open for everything. There are already yeah. open source chip initiatives, like actual chip design. Yes, but uh, there. Okay then. Yes, but there are no open source manufacturing um, projects that I know of. Yeah. Okay. And that's so, where I think we come in. So, but yeah, but definitely people are starting to so design then, design open source chips, and then it's not a big big uh, step to then say, okay, now we have open source machines that can do the the chip fabrication as well. Like refining, say refining of silicon to solar grade silicon, let's say. Um, yeah. That's I mean that you can do that on a small sense. scale. Yeah. I mean not a problem, and that's that's already semiconductors there. So, um, yeah, that, that's 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 right. It's it's more more this this chemical process like 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 you have with the uh, like like with the photo photo uh, sensitive layers and, and stuff. So I, I don't I don't know how 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 compli complicated that that would be, but yeah, yeah, yeah as the same maybe that, that will come with time. Yeah, yeah, just like people like everyone's doing a three D printer right now. You know that was impossible 
you know, a long time ago. That's so yeah, everything is getting more everything is getting more accessible. It's true. Technologically I don't think I don't think there are any limits to what can be done on a small scale. It's it's just uh, technology is advancing, especially with like micro micro manufacturing, molecular manufacturing. I mean, in fact, uh, so there's uh, one guy who's doing work on the open source guy here, Dr. Joshua Pierce. He's got the open source sustainability technology lab. I mean, he already is talking about open source photovoltaics, you know, things like that. So oh, that that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. That's that's kind of what's what's missing in your architecture, the, the energy, the energy product, production part. But uh, not really, um, because well, there's yeah. I mean, the roadmap has PV production in it, and then on a it, it has, but but it's it's not not. Uh, I've seen that you've you've kind of experimented with it, but but not with that great of a success. Uh, I've seen uh, the idea of the nickel uh, iron battery. Yeah. But actually, I've, I've, I've uh, got a, a friend, a chemistry student, and uh, we've experimented a bit uh, as well. And his professor said, um, what was it? No, no, I think, uh, I don't know what zinc is. Uh, zinc. Zinc, yeah. Zinc in English. It's zinc. Zinc, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, actually. Uh, I think zinc iron was, was um, out of the view of the professor was actually more efficient but uh before i give you some false information i can actually ask him when when you're uh, kind of interested in that and when you have time for it especially because there's a uh, there's a professor yeah. that's knowledgeable about nickel iron batteries uh, not about nickel iron but but he said that, that this wouldn't be that effective as nickel zinc and zinc is, is also pretty pretty available uh-huh so, I don't know about um, that. All I know is that that Edison batteries they last for a lifetime. They like for yeah, the, the, the 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 basic product does, but not not the electrolyte. So you have to refill the electrolyte after yeah. thirty years, actually. So it's not that big of a deal, but it's yeah, yeah it's, it's it's kind of. Um, it, it, it's true. It's it's pretty cheap and actually pretty uh, sustainable. But zinc is actually also pretty pretty hmm. efficient. And as we experimented around, we, we just realized it's very very. It's it's not not that energy dense. Simply, it's pretty complicated to build that. But but may, maybe you have another plan about that or. No, for now we're for just. For another time, I think. Yeah, yeah. Save it for another time. Let's get the print cluster. Going right now. Yeah. Step yeah. by step, by step, step one All thing right. at a time. Okay. Well, so, this this looks really good as far as the as far as the print cluster work. We've got a good diagram, so we'll get the parts and we'll test it if we can. I mean, we can do this pretty soon, so maybe next week. Uh, by next week, I could you know order the parts. I I, I hope I can deliver you the um the, the image for for your testing by okay. next week. I, I think I can do that. Excellent. Excellent. Um. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. This is really good. Major progress. So we'll we'll do this, and um, yeah. So thank you. So we'll talk then again at the next uh, next meeting. Maybe you can next meeting. Maybe you can report as far as what you have uh, found out so far. We can have you, like everyone updates. Um, yeah, I, I yeah. can kind of make. Uh, I kind yeah. of can. I, I can show the diagram and kind of explain it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Because what what I'll do now is is, is simply the program. I, I can also show the program, but um, oh, that's kind of a difficult question. Should I leave you? Uh, what's what's better? Is it better to leave you with an image that's kind of rudimentary, with a good documentation, or uh, a good image with a poor documentation? What's, uh, what's well, better? Well, good documentation would be better because we're we want to replicate it. So the key for you would yeah. be to document, like I'm, I put some notes on the documentation standards there, but make it such that a novice can pretty much replicate the, because it's carefully documented. So, so documentation standards, make, yeah. it, make it transparent for beginners so it's, it's easy enough and make it for Ubuntu, right? Yeah, right. Yep. Right. And then once we um, have this software, then we can include that in the OSC Linux distribution once we 
once we get this whole print cluster worked out, we can put that as our standard. I'd, I actually I'm not quite sure whether this is a good idea because uh, mm. it would just be an image, so it's pretty big without any use as long as you're not using it. So it would be 300 uh -huh. megabytes and it wouldn't be a program, it would be just a kind of uh, played onto your SD card. We uh -huh. could put a link into it, so you can just SSH yeah. it uh, out or something like that. I, I could put some kind of scripting that would pull it out of the USE repository or something like that. Uh -huh. That sounds to me more reasonable. Okay. Um, but, but we'll look into that as far as soon as we come there, I think. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. yeah, excellent. So I think you have enough to go on until next week. And then, yeah. Yes. Uh, whatever you have, yeah, just keep me in the loop so that we can report on it to the group meeting next Tuesday. All right? Do that. Yeah. All right, Christian. All well, right. thank you. Then. Thank you very much. Right. And we'll continue going. Okay. Yeah. Take See care. Bye-bye. <laughs>